The meeting, the meeting, the meeting's <laughs> over, my lady. It's okay to start now. Yeah. Please repeat. Narayanam Namaskritya Narayanam Namaskritya Dhanam Chayvanarottamam Dhanam Chayvanarottamam 
Devim Sarasvati Vyasam Toto Dan Udiraya Before we say Vishnu Bhagavatam, it is the very means of conquest. One should offer respect for basis unto the personality of Godhead Narayan. Unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being. Unto Mother Sarasvati, the goddess of learning. And unto Shuddha Vyasa, the author. Shrinvatam Svakita Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vedyantastoya Bhadrani. Vedyunati Sadhisatam. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. Who is the Paramatma Super Soul in everyone's heart? Paramatma Super Soul in everyone's heart. And the benefactor of the truthful devotee. And the benefactor of the truthful devotee. Cleanse desire for the material enjoyment. Cleanse desire for material enjoyment. From the heart of the devotee. From the heart of the devotee. Who's developed the urge to hear his messages. Who's developed the urge to hear his messages. Which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. My poor. Yes. Oh, thank you, Prabhupada. That is. Thank you very much. Nasta Bhreshu Bhadreshu Nasta Bhreshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavata Uttama Shloke Bhagavata Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki A regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam A regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam by the rendering of service to the pure devotee. By the rendering of service to the pure devotee. That is troublesome. To, all that is troublesome to the heart. All that is troublesome to the heart. Is almost completely destroyed. Is almost completely destroyed. In loving service unto the personality of Godhead. In loving service unto the personality of Godhead. Whose praise of transcendental songs. Whose praise of transcendental songs. Is established as an irrevocable fact. Is established as an irrevocable fact. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Big class today. <laughs> I wasn't expecting because, you know, it's so cold. And, you know, it's so amazing, but how long have we had these outfits here? Oh, they've been here about 20 years. Okay. I figured it's probably 18 or something like that. But, but you know, the amazing thing about it is that... They last year, I think. Well, the amazing thing about it is that oh, the, there's two okay. movies that are huge, and they're called Frozen 1 and 2. Frozen oh, yeah. 2 is out right now. You thought of that, too. All, all the snowflakes, yeah. and Frozen, all over, and it's like, wow, you know, that's great. See, that actually, what's supposed to happen is we're supposed to see something in the world that reminds us of Krishna, and now we have Krishna reminding me of this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've heard about it. Well, you know, both movies are about giving them oneself to help others and finding one's true power within themselves, you know. So, uh, I just thought it'd be a great way to preach to young people if you just happen to be wearing those that particular day and there happen to be kids here, which <laughs> is kind of rare. Uh, but, uh, I'm sure somebody knows their names too. I, I used to, but I forgot. Oh, the, the names of the uh, characters? Yeah. yeah. Uh, huge, huge uh, movies, for sure. But, um... So this is better than seeing the movies. Oh, this is, like, when you're up there on the altar and I'm looking at all these snowflakes and everything's just 
jumping out. It's like, it's so beautiful, you know? Yeah. It's just, uh, when I first walked on the altar today, they had them half, well, they're mostly all dressed, and I thought, wow, that's stunning. So beautiful. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, the second canto, the sixth chapter, text number 26. Please repeat. Nama Nama Deyani Deyani Mantrascha Mantrascha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Daksinascha Vritani Cha Daksinascha Vritani Cha Daksinascha Vritani Cha Daksinascha Vritani Cha Deva Tanu Kramaha, Deva Tanu Kramaha, Kapaha, Kapaha, Deva Deva Tanu Kramaha, Kapaha, Deva Tan Anu Kramaha, Deva Tanu Kramaha, Kapaha, Deva Anu Kramaha, Kapaha. Sankalpas tantram tantram. I'm sorry. Sankalpas. Sankalpas. Tantram. Tantram. Evacha. Evacha. Sankalpas tantram tantram evacha. Sankalpas evacha tantram evacha. Sankalpas tantram evacha. Sankalpas tantram evacha. Nama Deyani Mantrascha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Daksinascha Pratani Cha Daksinascha Pratani Cha Deva Tanukra Mahakapa Deva Tanukra Mahakapa Sankapa Tantra Eva Cha Sankapa Tantra Eva Cha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Nama Deyani Dakshinascha Mantrascha Daksinascha Pratani Cha Daksinascha Pratani Cha Deva Tanu Kramahakapa Deva Tanu Kramahakapa Sankalpa Santram Eva Cha Sankalpa Santram Eva Cha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Nama Deyani Dakshinascha Vritanicha Dakshinascha Vritanicha Devantanu Krama Kalpa Devantanu Kalpa Tantram Evacha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Dakshinascha Vratanicha Dakshinascha Vratanicha Devatanu Krama Kalpa Sankalpa Tantra Evacha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Dakshinascha Vritanicha Devatanu Krama Kalpa Sankalpa Tantra Mevacha Nama Deyani Mantrascha Dakshinascha Vritanicha Sankalpa Tantra Meva Cha Nama Deyani Mantras Cha Dakshinas Cha Vratani Cha Devatanu Brahman Kalpa Sankalpa Tantra Meva Cha Please repeat. Nama Deyani. Invoking the names of the demigods. Invoking the names of the demigods. 
Mantraha. Mantraha. Specific hymns to offer to a particular demigod. Specific, specific hymns. Specific demigod. Chanda. Also. Also. Bhaksinaha. Bhaksinaha. Reward. Reward. Chanda. And. And. Bratani. Bratani. Vows. Vows. Chanda. And. And. Devata, Devata, Anukramaha, Anukramaha, one demigod after another, one demigod after another, Kapaha, Kapaha, the specific scripture, the specific scripture, Sankapaha, Sankapaha, the specific purpose, the specific purpose, Tantram, Tantram, the particular process, the particular process, Eva, Eva, as they are. As they are. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. So. Translation. Please repeat. Other necessities. Uh, other necessities. Include invoking the different names of the demigods. Include invoking, invoking the different names, names of the demigods. By specific hymns and vows of recompense. By specific hymns and vows of recompense. In accordance with the particular scripture. In accordance with the particular scripture. For specific purposes. For specific purposes. And by specific processes. And by specific processes. Uh, I'll read that again. Translation. Other necessities include invoking the different names of the demigods by specific hymns and vows of recompense. In accordance with the particular scripture for specific purposes and by specific processes. Purport by the line reads, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. The whole process of offering sacrifice is under the category of food of action, and such activities are extremely scientific. They mainly depend on the process of vibrating sounds with a particular accent. It is a great science, and due to being out of proper use for more than 4,000 years, for want of qualified brahmanas, such performances of sacrifice are no longer effective. Nor are they recommended in this fallen age. Any such sacrifice undertaken in this age as a matter of show may simply be a cheating process by the clever priestly order. But such a show of sacrifices cannot be effective at any stage. Food of action is being carried on by the help of material science and to a little extent by gross material help. But the materialists await a still more subtle advancement in the process of vibrating sounds on which the Vedic hymns are established. Gross material science cannot divert the real purpose of human life. They can only increase the artificial needs of life without any solution to the problems of life. Therefore, the way of materialistic life leads to the wrong type of human civilization. Therefore, the way of materialistic life leads to the wrong type of human civilization. Since the ultimate aim of life is spiritual realization, the direct way of invoking the holy name of the Lord, as mentioned above, is precisely recommended by Lord Chaitanya. And people of the modern age can easily take advantage of this simple process, which is tenable for the condition of the complicated social structure. <clears throat> Translation. Other necessities include invoking the different names of the demigods by specific hymns and vows of recompense in accordance to the particular scripture for specific purposes and by specific processes.
So when uh, there is sacrifice, there is always a goal. And of course, the sacrifice, the most high sacrifice, is the chanting of the Lord's holy name. And of course, Vaishnavas, if you ask the Vaishnava, what is the goal of our sacrifice? <laughs> We simply answer this. It's very simple. To please Krishna. It's not that we're trying to get anything out of uh, our sacrifice, chanting the Lord's holy name. I just want to read a little bit from the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. The Supreme Lord, this is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Lord remained in Sachi Devi's womb. Then on a full moon night in the month of Kalguna, he appeared. Even before his appearance, the Lord started propagating the Sankirtan movement. When there was a solar eclipse, crowds of people went to bathe in the Ganga. And all of them chanted the holy name of the Lord. Indeed, some people that had never even once chanted the holy name of the Lord did so enthusiastically while proceeding to the Ganga. Because the sound of the chanting filled all directions, the Lord smiled to himself as he made his appearance. Sri Jagannath Mishma and Srimati Sachi Devi glanced at their newborn child's beautiful face and were overwhelmed by unbounded joy. The ladies that gathered around were so excited that they knew not what to do, but simply ululated in jubilation. Friends and relatives hurried to see the newborn child so that Jagannath Mishra's house soon became a scene of great excitement. Sachimata's father, Ilambar Chakrabarti, arrived, and when he made the child's astrological chart, he found many wonderful signs. Indeed, Ilambar Chakrabarti was astonished to see the Lord's beauty, and he observed many divine symbols on his body. There was a widely accepted prophecy that someday a Brahmanist son would become the king of Bengal. Sri Chakrabarti thought that the time had come when this statement would be proven true. In the presence of all, a lumbar Chakravarti explained in detail the implications of the Lord's horoscope. He said, quote, This child will excel at Bihaspati as a scholar, and he, he will be like a reservoir of all divine qualities. A great sage was present there, disguised as a local Brahmana. Describing the Lord's future activities, he said, quote, This child is the Supreme Lord, Narayan himself, he will reveal the essence of religion by establishing a wonderful preaching movement. He will deliver the whole world. Isn't that beautiful? This child is the Supreme Lord and remind himself. He will reveal the essence of religion. And by establishing a wonderful preaching movement, he will deliver the whole world. Simply by seeing him People will feel compassion for all living beings and become callous toward material pleasures and pains. What to speak of ordinary men, even hardcore atheists, will worship this child's lotus feet. That's an astounding statement. What to speak of ordinary men, even hardcore atheists, will worship this child's lotus feet. His glories will be spread throughout the entire creation, and people from all orders of life will come to worship him. How greatly fortunate you are, Jagannath Mishra. Offer my basis unto you, the illustrious father of this child. Your son's name will be Vishnambar, and he will also be known to everyone as Navadri Chandra, the moon of Navadri. Jagannath Mishra was enthralled to hear this description of his son. Falling at the Brahmana's feet, he cried in great happiness. In turn, the Brahmana caught hold of Sri Mishra's feet, and upon seeing this, everyone present shouted, Hari Hari! Hari Hari! Musicians arrived, playing upon the redundants, flutes, and shine. Sh sh How do you say it? Shinai. 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 <laughs> Filling the air with their vibrations. Ladies from the higher planets mingled with the neighborhood ladies unnoticed by them. Aditi, the mother of the demigods, holding grass and potty. Patty, uh, placed her right hand on the child's head and blessed him by saying, quote, Please remain eternally within the material world and manifest your pastimes. Although Shumati, Sachi Devi, and others noticed the extraordinary beauty 
For these ladies, they hesitated to inquire about their identities. At that time, the demigods very respectfully took the dust from Sachi Mata's feet, causing her great astonishment. In fact, not even Lord Ananta Sesh could properly describe the atmosphere of ecstasy that inundated Jana Mishra's house. The entire district and Nadia seemed to be present there to experience the indescribable joy. Wherever people were in their houses, in the streets, or at the Ganga, they loudly chanted, loudly chanted the Lord's holy name. In this way, everyone celebrated the Lord's appearance, although in their minds they were simply doing what was required on the occasion of the eclipse. Thus the Lord appeared on the full moon night in the month of Falguno, February 18, 1486. Bani Inanda appeared earlier on the 13th night of the waxing moon in the month of Maga. The Lord's appearance gave profound joy to all within Jagannath Mishra's house. Sri Vishwaru would pick up his brother and while holding him in his arms, smiled blissfully. The Lord was always surrounded by relatives and family and friends. When he would cry, only the sound of chanting Krishna's holy name would pacify him. Understanding the Lord's purpose, the people would immediately chant the holy name whenever he cried. Being in a jovial mood, the demigods decided to play some tricks on the people that continually surrounded baby Nimai. In subtle forms invisible to others, the demigods went about the house. When the people saw a shadowy figure, they called out, There goes a thief. And this is, this is further, quite a bit further in the book. Seeing her son's transcendental happiness, Sachi Mata felt very happy, except for one dreadful thought that um, continuously interrupted her cheerful mood. Quote, what if my son leaves home? Brushing aside such unpleasant thoughts, she would say, my dear son, please go to bathe in the Ganga. Vishwambara would simply reply, mother, please chant the holy names. Rama, Krishna. Indeed, in every conversation with his mother, the Lord would invariably reply with Krishna and only that much. One day, a wandering devotee, Lord Shiva, passed by. Let me skip on down here. The Lord told his devotees, My dear brothers, please hear from me the essential teachings of Shastra. Why should we waste our nights in useless activities? Let us make a firm resolution today to spend the nights engaged in the most auspicious activity, the chanting of the holy name of the Lord. By performing sankirtan, all of us would drown in the deluge of devotional ecstasy caused by love of God. Let the whole world become delivered by hearing the holy name. In this way, the Lord began his sankirtan pastimes. Every night he would meet all the devotees in Srivast Pandit's house or sometimes in Shandushekar's house. These kirtans would be attended by so many devotees that it is not possible to remember all of their names. So as we can see, uh, the Lord personally came to start this, uh, inaugurate the congregational chanting of Lord Krishna's holy name. It's the ultimate sacrifice. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad. Where'd you get that? I've had it ever since I've been in, at Marseille. Who, who is it translated by? Yeah, yeah it's told by Korna Prajnadas. So, we chant the highest mantra. And what is the definition of mantra? Now, this is from a glossary from uh, Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. Man means mind, and tra means deliverance. A pure sound vibration to deliver the mind from its material inclinations. A pure sound vibration to deliver the mind from its material inclinations. And last night we were re-watching uh, the 
seek the DVD about George Harrison, you know, dedicated to George Harrison. In that book, uh, Shannon Be Happy, uh, the next line below it says, uh, the power of mantra meditation. You know? And I thought that was really, really sweet. The power of mantra meditation. It's a meditation and it's a mantra. And if you just read that title, first of all, it captures their attention by saying, chant and be happy. Now that's what everybody wants. Be happy. And then right below it, it says, the power of mantra meditation. And uh, <clears throat> you can have a whole conversation about that, you know. You can be freed from anxiety, you know. The spiritual world is Vaikuntha. That means free from anxiety. That's the name of the real spiritual world. And immediately you've got people's attention. Yeah, there, was, uh, uh, there was that Mayor, Mayor <coughs> Baba. And... Um, <coughs> Uh, I remember, first, I didn't know anything about him, but I was, the uh, first time I went to Berkeley, they had a huge billboard, right by, uh, not the Golden Gate Bridge, but the one that goes to, and it was a huge, and it said, don't worry, be happy. Um, and I immediately started worrying, because, <laughs> I, am I happy? I don't know, what is that mean? <laughs> but, and it just dawned on me, where, here where the devotees are saying, Chant and be happy. It's a, you know, you know, it, it's a positive. There's something you do. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra. You be happy. Just to say, don't worry. I mean, that's you know, you start to worry. Oh. <laughs> I was worried. Am I happy? Yeah, I'm happy. They're commanding me. <laughs> but, but I'm worrying whether or not I'm worrying. You know, it was very. Uh, off putting. Yeah. This is the positive. It, it's kind of starting with a negative instead of a positive. Yeah. Well, you know, um, in the spiritual world, I mean, you can run barefoot and not worry about cutting your feet, you know, or breaking a toe, or falling and breaking a, a bone. Run and play and holler and scream and run through the woods, run through the grassy fields with all the flowers and the birds, and your only concern is Christian anyway. But when I remember when I was a child, and you're kind of ignorant as a child, I used to remember that I was so happy because I was pretty ignorant of other people's bad doings, you know what I mean? I grew up pretty in the country, and I was pretty protected, I guess, but uh, I was pretty ignorant. Uh, you're blissful because you're ignorant of the things that can't happen. And when I was a kid, there wasn't many broken bottles around. We ran around the beaches, you know, played and swam and, you know, hiked in the woods and rarely got hurt. But but nowadays, there's probably broken glass everywhere, you know, and there's a lot of dangers. And then, of course, you find out that people are capable of hurting in so many ways, you know, so many ways. And then, you know, you think that the Internet is a nice thing, but... God, talk about anxiety. I mean, all of your personal information, if it's on a computer, it's like, oh my God, constant anxiety. Will all my personal information, will they destroy my life? You know what I mean? All these anxieties, these subtle anxieties are there behind the scenes <coughs> on the back burners. You know, so it just seems like as how you progresses. I mean, and now the North Pole is uh, rapidly shifting to Siberia. You know? <laughs> it already did. Yeah. It's already reached Siberia. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, 34 miles per, was it year? The was it magnet, north? magnetic north. The magnetic north is moved. Because the lava is always fluid, it, it'll change, you know what I mean? So and of course, course, we're way overdue to be shifted, completely shifted. New compasses have a little adjustment now, so you can change it a little. Yeah. But if that happens, who knows what's going to happen with the computer age. It could flip. I mean, it could actually flip. Yeah, it's way overdue. And they know because of the molten lava from in Hawaii, all the eruptions by core drillings, that it's shifted so many times in the past. Mm -hmm. So many times. I forgot how many times. What do you mean shift? What is that? Yeah, it means it totally shifts. The pole shifts. Up is down, down is up. 
<laughs> compass. Well, magnetic. Magnetic. magnetic yeah. Positive and negative. The compass is. Yeah. They have that's my understanding. Yeah. Positive and negative would switch places, basically. It, it could really disrupt a lot. It, right? it is scientifically pretty amazing. Hopefully, it, not where the airplanes fall from the sky, so. <laughs> could that happen, though? No, they would adjust. They wouldn't just fall. They, they, can, they can also pick up radar at, at the airport they're going to, so they know how to. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I don't know how it would affect computers. Well, maybe if they launch missiles at each other, they'll go <laughs> back on themselves. Wait a minute. Oh, wow. It will affect all migrations. Well, migrations, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've got a point there. Yeah, they should do. If that's what they go by, maybe they just go by Super Soul. Yeah, I was going to say, if Super Soul overrides, you know. <laughs> but I'll read one more thing. Uh, this is on chanting, and it's from the Hidden Glory of India. Krishna says, I dwell not in the spiritual kingdom, nor in the hearts of yogis. Where my devotees are chanting, there, O Narada, stand I, from the Padma Purana. I dwell not in the spiritual kingdom, nor in the hearts of yogis. Where my devotees are chanting, there, O Narada, stand I. Vaishnava texts state that in much the same way that one could awaken a person who is sleeping by making a sound or calling out his name, man can awaken himself from his conditioned materialistic slumber by calling out the name of God. In fact, the world's major religious traditions concur that it is by chanting the name of God that one attains enlightenment and freedom from materialistic conditioning. Muhammad counseled, quote, Glorify the name of your Lord, the Most High. Uh, Quran 872. St. Paul said, Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. Buddha declared, All who sincerely call upon my name will come to me after death, and I will take them to paradise. Vows of Amida Buddha 18. King David preached, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Psalms 113.3. And the Vaishnava scriptures repeatedly assert, chant the holy name, chant the holy name, chant the holy name of the Lord. He covered that yesterday in this day's text, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. In this age of quarrel, there is no other way, no other way, no other way to attain spiritual enlightenment. Rihan Naradiya Purana 38126. Praise of the holy name of God is found throughout the literature of the Vaishnavas. Quote, Oh, how glorious are they whose tongues are chanting your holy name. Even if originally low-born dog eaters, they are to be considered worshipable. To have reached the point of chanting the Lord's name, they must have executed various austerities and Vedic sacrifices and achieved all the good qualities of true Aryans. If they are chanting your holy name, they must have bathed in all holy rivers, studied the Vedas, and fulfilled all prescribed duties. Srimad Bhagavatam 3.33.7 Quote, The holy name of Krishna is the spiritually blissful giver of all benedictions. For it is Krishna himself, the reservoir of pleasure. Krishna's name is complete in itself and is the essential form of all spiritual relationships. It is not a material name under any condition, and it is no less powerful than Krishna himself. This name is not tinged by any aspect of material nature, because it is identical with Krishna. Padma Purana 321. Because chanting the name of God is so much emphasized in Vaishnava texts, practitioners focus on chanting as a central devotional method. Thus, deep meditation and great emotion accompany Japa, the soft chanting, Kirtan, the loud chanting, and Sankirtan, the congregational chanting. When perfected, the chanting leads to awareness of God's absolute nature, i.e., that there, that there is no difference between the Nami, 
the named one, and Nama, the name. Absorption in the absolute nature of Krishna and his name is the heart of Vaishnava mysticism leading to love of God. Norman Hein, professor emeritus at Yale University, has witnessed enthusiastic Gaudiya Vaishnava Kirtan, and in writing about it, he captures its most emotional components. And this is what he says. In the singing of verses like these, each line separately is incanted by the leader first, and the whole assembly repeats each line after him, one by one. As the verse is gone through again and again, the leader steps up the temple. When the speed of utterance approaches the utmost possible, the whole group in unison begins to shout the lines at the same time beating out the rhythm with sharply timed clapping hands. The singers begin to sway and let themselves go in ungoverned gestures. Faces flush. From the line of instrumental accompanists, the bell-like peal of small brass cymbals swells up with the rising shouting and pierces through it. The whole process approaches a crashing, untakeable, un un breathtaking. The whole process approaches a crashing, breathtaking crescendo. The point of explosion is reached. Eyes flash, mouths drop open, a tremor runs through the entire assembly. The power, the presence has been felt. The power of the big capital P and the presence of the capital P has been felt. Exclamation mark. <laughs> that was a professor that? wrote that? Professor. Yeah. Professor. Uh, who was his, what was his name? Norvin Hein, the professor emeritus of Yale University, uh, has witnessed enthusiastic Gaudiya Vaishnava Kirtan, and in writing about it, he captures its most emotional components. Wow. <laughs> Singing of Suradas and Dallas, especially Dallas. <laughs> the name of sweat just fired everywhere, you know, puddles of sweat. You know what I mean? Before you go out to the airport, you know what I mean? It was like the way we had cure time, it was just like that. It was so ecstatic, you know. We always let go. <laughs> so nice. But anyway, uh, I wanted to point out that um, this is our sacrifice. And there's a picture of Lord Chaitanya and the punch top of dancing in ecstasy, you know. Uh, that's what the devotees do. Chanting, dancing, feasting, and hearing the truth from self-realized souls, the real truth, from self-realized souls, who would not be attracted to this movement, you know. So we do perform sacrifice. I mean, the materialists nowadays, yes, they, you know, they, they have more than just four people who do their sacrifice. Like when it used to be authorized before, 5,000 years ago, there'd be four people, you know, one who would not light the fire by mantra, you know, one who feeds the fire, and, you know, there's four people who are involved, are qualified Brahmins, qualified Brahmins, one who will properly enunciate syllable by syllable, like that, you know. So, uh, yeah, the, the materialists nowadays, they have their sacrifices that they do, there's no doubt about it, they arrive so early in the morning, and even in India, probably I gave a class, and he was saying in Bombay, they rise and take three hours to get to their job, and then in the evenings, take three hours to get back home, and why do they do it? Because they could maybe sleep at the job or something. He says, search life. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's why they do it. It's sacrifice. But they're doing it. We're sacrificing for Krishna. You know, That's our sacrifice. Uh, our daily duties, uh, we're, we're, we're doing it. I love for Krishna. We're cooking for Krishna. You know? Now the karmis, like now, well, I don't want to call them karmis, but they have their sacrifices. Like... Uh, I'm always talking about Elon, Elon Musk, right? But there's several other organizations that are launching. And the thing of it is, they have to have the best of the best to put these rockets together. They have to hold together in freezing cold conditions, in terrible, terrible blazing, like when they lift off, and then the G-forces are so tremendous. You know, they have to, all of that, they have to hold together. One little valve leaks, and the whole thing explodes, you know, which it happens. Unfortunately, but the, the point I'm trying to make is that intense fire when they light it, they light, they build all of this, they have all these experts, 
you know, materialistic experts in this science. That's their materialistic science. And devotees, we have our transcendental science. But uh, they cannot mess up on anything because all of those uh, welding that goes on, like that Elon Musk uses that uh, rolled uh, uh, sheet metal, special sheet metal. Well, when they weld that, you know, they have experts, uh, expert welders, it has to hold. It has to hold in space, has to hold when it's launching. It has to be reused, reused, reused. And the point I'm trying to make is, yes, they have their fire of sacrifice. And when you see the launch, it's an incredible amount of power that's coming out of those rockets, you know. They're feeding it with, like, liquid, uh, what's it called? Oxygen. Uh, oxygen, and then they also have, like, trailers they use. They, in the old days, they had trailers that would, uh, not propane, but kerosene, yeah. Liquefied kerosene, whatever. Uh, feeding like in there. Jet <laughs> fuel. Just tremendous, tremendous. You see that blazing across the sky? Tremendous power. Tremendous power. But it's very scary. And, and they're sacrificing. They have their fires of sacrifice. But it's all for material reasons. Even if they're trying to get to another planet, you know what I mean, so that we can have another place to live, that's just for the material aspirations. Did anybody have uh, questions or comments? I was going to say that that like is like uh, what they try to do with, with that it, um, is it's very crude in a sense. We, and they may respect it in the sense that it's the best technology that man knows at this moment. But it's crude and, and because the, the subtle sciences of, um, of the Vedas, the attempt to be able to transport yourself is so much more sublime. It's a much uh, subtle, more subtle thing. It doesn't require all of this uh, hot fires and blazing metals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, You're right, though. You? Or like when Prophet said that the tunneling through mountains, yeah. you know, that can be done very... Uh, yogis can transport themselves through things like that. Mm -hmm. but they, they imitate it with a very, you know, even, you know, like, you know, they refer to smart bombs, smart, smart bombs, yeah. or, or a clean bomb versus a, nat, a dirty bomb. Mm -hmm. Like the first atomic bombs, they considered them dirty yeah. because they were so destructive and indiscriminately. Mm -hmm. Now they have what they call sublime, uh, smart and smart or clean. And, but can you be more smart or more clean than a Brahmastra that just kills the woman? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and a mother without killing the mother? I mean, even a ghost can travel thousands of miles per second, Prophet says. And, you know what I mean? A ghost. And we don't think very highly of the ghost, but they have that ability very easily to travel great distances and cause great mischief as well. You know? And that's just material sense. You know, what the speed of this, the speed of spirits faster than the speed of mind, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's really fascinating. So they do have their fire sacrifice in so many ways. You know, every day people are getting up. I mean, there's some celebrities that get up at like 3.30 in the morning, like Mark Wahlberg, you know. And he sacrifices for his profession. He works out every, practically every morning that early. gets up and hardly ever takes any sugar. You know what I mean? Very strict. He's sacrificing for his, for his profession. You know? So we're all doing our sacrifices. Anybody else want to make a comment? So you're able to join us, huh, Maji? How are the cows doing? They're good. They're good. <laughs> okay, well, all glories to simple devotees, all glories to the entire part of Parah, Shishi, Barnatai, Shishi, Barnatai, Kanto, Ki Jai, Vaishnava, Bhagavad Gita, Vaishnava, Ki Jai. Just release all of his patents. <laughs>